Good morning and welcome to Mass here at St John's. Welcome if you're participating via the internet. Today we anticipate the third Sunday of Advent and the readings can be found on page 51. Uh, the school who were going to be coming here on Sunday afternoon for their Christingle service have decided that in the current COVID environment that this isn't safe and uh, that service is going to take place in the school this afternoon. Likewise, sadly, the two carol services that were going to take place here next Monday are now taking place at the school, probably in the playground outside. So, my friends, pray for dry weather on Monday. And next Friday, uh, after this Mass, I'd be delighted if you'd like to come to the vicarage for some coffee and for some hot mince pies. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts be open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind, and with all thy strength. This is the first commandment. And the second is like, namely, this. Thou shalt love thy neighbour as thyself. There is none other commandment greater than these. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy upon us, and write all these thy laws in our hearts. We beseech thee. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O Lord Jesus Christ, who at thy first coming did send thy messenger to prepare the way before thee, grant that the ministers and stewards of thy mysteries may likewise so prepare and make ready thy way by turning the hearts of the disobedient to the wisdom of the just, that at thy second coming to judge the world, we may be found an acceptable people in thy sight, who livest and reignest with the Father and the Holy Ghost, one God, now and for ever. Amen. The epistle is taken from the first epistle of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Let a man so account of us as of the ministries of Christ and stewards of the mysteries of God. Moreover, it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful. But with me, it is a very small thing that I should be judged of you or of man's judgment. Yea, I judge not mine own self. For I know nothing by myself, yet am I not hereby justified, but he that judges me is the Lord. Therefore judge nothing before the time, until the Lord come, who both will bring to light the hidden things of darkness, and will make manifest the counsels of the hearts, and then shall every man have praise of God. Here endeth the epistle.
The Holy Gospel is written in that according to St. Matthew, the 11th chapter beginning at the second verse. Now when John had heard in the prison the works of Christ, he sent two of his disciples and said unto them, Art thou he that should come, or do we look for another? Jesus answered and said unto him, Go and show John again those things which ye do hear and see. The blind receive their sight, and the lame walk. The lepers are cleansed, and the deaf hear. The dead are raised up, and the poor have the gospel preached to them. And blessed is he whosoever shall not be offended in me. And as they departed, Jesus began to say unto the multitude concerning John, What went ye out into the wilderness to see? A reed shaken with the wind? But what went ye out for to see? A man clothed in soft raiment? Behold, they that wear soft clothing are in king's houses. But what went ye out to see? A prophet? Yea, I say unto you, and more than a prophet. For this is he of whom it is written, Behold, I send my messenger before thy face, which shall prepare thy way before thee. Praise be to thee, O Christ. the Almighty, maker of heaven and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Ghost of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of the Father and he shall come again with glory to judge both the quick and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord and giver of life, who proceedeth from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spake by the prophets. And I believe one holy Catholic and apostolic church I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. May I speak in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The English word Advent means coming. Christ is coming at Christmas. That's true. This is a time to prepare in heart and mind for that momentous and defining moment in human history. But to stop there would be to fudge the issue. For the central thrust of this season of the year is that the coming of God has the purpose of judgment. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. So stand ready because the Son of Man is coming at an hour you do not expect. So what sense can we make of this judgment of God? First, we should acknowledge a problem. Because when we talk about judgment, we almost inevitably think about punishment. After all, that's the way the law works. The punishment, it is said, fits the crime. 
at least in the few places in the world where you are presumed innocent until proven guilty. So is God coming in judgment in order to condemn and punish? Well, an honest look at the scriptures, the answer is yes, in part at least. The Old Testament, on the whole, envisions an angry God whose anger has to be appeased and, on the whole, in this mindset, suffering is the just punishment for sin and the sins of the fathers are passed on to the children, alarmingly. But page after page of the New Testament story speaks of a God who comes in love. God so loved the world that he gave his son so that everyone who believes in him may not be lost, but may have eternal life. For God sent his son into the world not to condemn the world. Perhaps one of the most famous passages of scripture. And yet we seem not to preach that message and sometimes I wonder whether we quite believe it. When we think of God, more often than not, we think of him waiting to catch us out and punish us like an overbearing schoolmaster tyrant. It fits nicely with our fantasies and it's much clearer that way because we know where we are with punishment. But love is more difficult, more confusing. Now, as an attempt to help us into this coming of God in judgment, let me introduce a phrase around which we could hang our thoughts. The phrase is, Never let sleeping dogs lie. Never let sleeping dogs lie. Now, when I think about the judgment of God in my own life, I think of him never letting sleeping dogs lie. By that I mean that God's judging is an ever-present reality, a motivating and sustaining force in life. It's not just that God wants me to be sorry for my sins. Of course he does, and I am. It is much more than that. God wants me to experience life at a deep and profound level. He wants it for you, too. He wants me and you to enjoy deep and satisfying relationships with him and the people around us, to live in a communion of love and fellowship. But to do that, he needs to be alongside me, never letting the sleeping dogs of my sin and selfishness lie. By showing me where and how I fall short of his love, God helps me learn the lessons of heart and mind that will help me flourish. He does this, of course, not in an instant, but over the years, gradually drawing me into a new way of being, a way more like that of Christ. He's like a kind of refining fire, to quote the scriptures. So God's judging us is a kind of restlessness, a yearning for us, as he wills us on to better things, to a more satisfying life until we can say with St. Paul that it is not I that live, but Christ who lives in me. Now, when I start to speak like that, we can see that God's judgment is part of his love. For love always desires the very best for the beloved. So God's coming in judgment is a fundamental aspect of God's way with the world and with his people. 
with the world. God so loved the world. It must also be that God wants, that what God wants for you and for me individually, he also wants for the world. Even a cursory glance at the world around us leads us to the acknowledgement that the world is in deep trouble. What is God's judgment in relationship to the environmental crisis that lurks in the wings? St. Paul has this phrase that helps us frame an answer. Creation, he writes in Romans, still retains the hope of being freed, like us, from its slavery to decadence, to enjoy the same freedom and glory as the children of God. So in the world, God's judging is also part of his loving. God wants the world to have life in all its fullness. And so he cannot let the sleeping dogs of indifference and apathy and the greed of exploitation win in the end. So the spirit of God is the spirit of prophecy, challenging the world's tainted compromises, its greed and its lust, its lies. And the spirit of God is a vigorous and enabling force working for a world which is more just and equitable, a world where all people will have peace and the resources they need to live a life which is deeply satisfying until all people enjoy the same freedom and glory as the children of God. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. As we offer Mass today, in years mind, we remember and pray for the soul of Frank Haynes Collison. Let your light so shine before others that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Let us pray for the whole state of Christ's church, militant here in earth. Almighty and ever-living God, who by thy holy apostle has taught us to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all men, we humbly beseech thee most mercifully to receive these our prayers which we offer unto thy divine majesty beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity, and concord. And grant that all they that do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word and live in unity and godly love. We beseech thee also to save and defend all Christian kings, princes, and governors, and especially thy servant Elizabeth, our queen, that under her we may be godly and quietly governed. 
and grant unto her whole counsel and to all that are put in authority under her that they may truly and impartially minister justice to the punishment of wickedness and vice and to the maintenance of thy true religion and virtue. Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops and priests and deacons, that they may both by their life and doctrine set forth thy true and lively word and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. And to all thy people give thy heavenly grace, especially to this congregation here present, that with meek heart and due reverence they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. And we most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succour all them who, in this transitory life, are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. And we also bless thy holy name, for all thy servants departed this life in thy faith and fear, beseeching thee to give us grace, so to follow their good examples, that with them we may be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Grant this, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. Ye that do truly and earnestly repent you of your sins and are in love and charity with your neighbours and intend to lead a new life following the commandments of God and walking from henceforth in his holy ways, draw near with faith and take this holy sacrament to your comfort and make your humble confession to Almighty God. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men, we acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed, by thought, word, and deed against thy divine majesty, provoking most justly thy wrath and indignation against us. We do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us. The burden of them is intolerable. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. For thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in newness of life to the honour and glory of thy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins to all them that with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Hear what comfortable words our Saviour Christ saith unto all that truly turn to him. Come unto me, all that travel and are heavy laden, and I will refresh you. So God loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son to the end that all that believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Hear also what St. Paul saith. This is a true saying and worthy of all men to be received, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Hear also what St. John saith. If any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the propitiation for our sins. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is very meet, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, almighty and everlasting God. And now we give thee thanks because thou didst send Christ Jesus to redeem us from sin and death and to make us inheritors of everlasting life, that when he shall come again in power and great triumph to judge the world, we may with joy behold his appearing and in confidence may stand before him. 
therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the heaven, we laud and magnify the glory evermore praising thee and saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord Most High. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We do not presume to come to this thy table, merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table, but thou art the same Lord, whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of thy tender mercy did give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made there, by his one oblation of himself once offered, a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation, and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and did institute, and in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death until his coming again. Hear us, O merciful, we most humbly beseech thee, and grant that we, receiving these thy creatures of bread and wine, according to thy Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood, who, in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread, and when he'd given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it in remembrance of me. Wherefore, O Lord and Heavenly Father, we, thy humble servants, entirely desire thy fatherly goodness mercifully to accept this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, most humbly beseeching thee to grant that by the merits and death of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and all thy whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. And here we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls and bodies, to be a reasonable, holy, and lively sacrifice unto thee, humbly beseeching thee that all we who are partakers of this holy communion may be fulfilled with thy grace and heavenly benediction. And although we be unworthy through our manifold sins to offer unto thee any sacrifice, Yet we beseech thee to accept this, our bounden duty and service, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offences. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom, in the unity of the Holy Ghost, all honour and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. As our Saviour Christ hath commanded and taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, 
Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, grant us thy peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him that takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be here. Corpus Christi, me custodia in vita eterna. Amen.
almighty and ever-living God, we most heartily thank thee for that thou dost vouchsafe to feed us who have duly received these holy mysteries with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of thy Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, and dost assure us thereby of thy favour and goodness towards us, and that we are very members incorporate in the mystical body of thy Son, which is the blessed company of all faithful people, and are also heirs through hope of thy everlasting kingdom by the merits of the most precious death and passion of thy dear Son. And we most humbly beseech thee, O Heavenly Father, so to assist us with thy grace, that we may continue in that holy fellowship and do all such good works as thou hast prepared for us to walk in, through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honour and glory, world without end. Amen. The peace of God which passeth all understanding Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen.